this video is about first time parent home hacks. I've got some really, really good ideas here which I've actually used myself, which I'm gonna share with you, which hopefully will make your life so much easier when you bring your baby home. I've got some cracking ideas and some really good products. I will link it all in the description box so you can go and find it all there. If you haven't heard of these already, it's such a good idea to get yourself a nappy caddy made together. Basically, it's essentials that you're gonna need for your newborn baby, not just your newborn baby, your older baby as well. It is a basket and then inside are things that you're gonna need now, I highly recommend you do two of these, one for upstairs and one for downstairs. I've actually done a video on what I've put in my nappy caddy, which I will link here if you want to go and check that out with lots of ideas. I will also put the link to it in the description box if you wanna to continue to watch the rest of the video. Also, good idea to have a changing mat upstairs and one downstairs as well, so you don't have to carry one around the house with you. I went for a good year or more shutting my children's bedroom door like this, you know, really gingerly so it doesn't go bang when I close it because sometimes they do just go bang, don't they? So I invested in these tiny little silicone like knobbly things that you just attach inside the door frame. So when you close the door, the door hits that first rather than the wooden frame. So there's no big clunky sound. You don't have to be like so careful where it takes you half an hour to close the door. These things that you can get, I got them from Amazon actually. They're little silicone knobbly things you just put inside the door frame. And voila, when you've put your baby down to sleep, it is common knowledge that you will stand on everything squeaky. And I'm not just on about toys left around, I'm on about the floor. You will just walk around and everything, you will find the squeaky spots everywhere. Do yourself a favor and locate the squeaky spots and then get used to where they are so you don't step on them. It's usually walking up and down the stairs that you will hear most of the, the squeaks and the crunches. That actually is quite audible in the house, believe it or not, especially if you're trying to keep everything quiet, you will definitely hear that. So even if you have to do little markers for a little while so you remember where not to stand, I would do it. Don't obviously do it with anything big and bulky, just with like, I don't know, a little bit of paper or something, just so you know where not to stand. So locate the squeaky spots. Talking about squeaky spots, if you have a squeaky door, especially if it's your child's squeaky door, oil those hinges. You will all be so much happier. You can get some WD-40, or even I just think like olive oil from your cupboard door, just put a little bit of that in from your cupboard door from your cupboard just put a little bit of that in the hinges give it a little wiggle there you go lovely you won't have to listen to a squeaky door anymore so you won't wake your child up every time you close your door before you go to get your newborn from hospital it is a really good idea to have your baby seat in your car already get used to your baby seat as well Make sure you've taken it out of its wrapper, taken all the labels and everything off, adjust the straps, get used to your baby seat. Some people like to put a teddy in the seat. Do that, get a teddy, stick it in the seat and learn the straps and how the plug works and how to adjust it and how to open it as well once it's already plugged in. Get to know how to put it in the car if you're using a base where it's already in there and release it to get it back out again because these things can actually be quite stressful especially if you haven't done it before if you're not really used to it get any equipment that you are going to be using for your baby including things like toys and things you're going to be putting your baby in make sure that is all assembled ready before you bring your baby home make sure you have enough time to do it as well because the last thing you want to do is be heavily pregnant thinking I've got to put all of this equipment together or even just basic things like a swing. Make sure it's all done and up. And just fold it up and put it where it's going to live as well. Get all of your equipment up, put it together, get stuff out of the boxes, take the tags off and put it in the homes that it's going to be staying in so you know where to find these things and when where to put them back. If you're using a milk machine where you would make your formula milk, get that out of the box as well. If you're planning on breastfeeding, you probably won't have one of these things anyway, but if you're not, if you're planning on bottle feeding, get the machine up and even give it a quick go. See how it works, but just go through the motions of making a bottle of milk. Get your steriliser, whatever you're gonna be using. If you're gonna be using a microwave steriliser or one that stands on the kitchen worktop. Get all of that sorted out and get to know it first. If you're thinking that you might be breast 
pumping milk and then giving it to your baby via a bottle get to know your breast pump um, I wouldn't recommend attaching it to your boob and then putting it on to stimulate milk because that can stimulate labor so we don't want to go doing that something that i did near the end of my pregnancy three and two weeks before my due date i might have left it a little bit late but i made a load of meals i did some batch cooking i froze them they're in the freezer so we just take them out when we want to eat them oh my goodness it is such a lifesaver you've got all of these meals ready made for your family you don't have to really think about it too much just got to defrost it get out of the freezer in the morning by the end of the day when you want to come to eat it it's defrosted you just put it in the oven or whatever to heat it up I actually made a video on batch cooking because I made a load of food when I had my last baby I'll put the video up here somewhere here's the link I will also put it in my description box baby clothes can become quite confusing because when you look at it in the drawer it could just look like a big ah, a big minefield of all of these clothes and especially if someone's looking in the drawer who hasn't separated the clothes and where they go, they're just gonna think that it's just all the same size, maybe. So a good idea is to separate the clothes into ages using a divider or using different drawers. So the top drawer could be newborn, the next drawer could be naught to three. You can get lots of clothing separators from Amazon. I use some boxes, I've been using them, well, I've, I've always used them, they're just so good. Now your baby is most likely going to be sleeping in your bedroom with you. Our baby sleeps next to us in a little crib here. That one is a snooze pod. We also have a Moses basket downstairs as well. So when he has his naps, he is downstairs with us. I haven't been using it as much anymore, but definitely when he was a newborn, if he got really sleepy, I put him in his Moses basket and he was always next to us. I mean, you can have a Moses basket upstairs and then take it downstairs with you if you wish and then use it downstairs too. It's all personal preference. Now a really good thing to help your baby sleep is a sound machine. I've used it with all of my children. I personally love having a bit of background noise when I sleep as well. Um, I think it's called white noise. Pink noise is also good. I have bought this little box from Amazon and on there plays lots and lots of different sounds. White noise, pink noise, rain, wind, all sorts of things like that. I think there's even birds on it. The children fall asleep to it so easy and also it's not just that they fall asleep to it it also blocks out any other noises in the house if you've got other children in another room screaming and shouting you don't want to wake up your baby it's always a good idea just to put one of them on in the bedroom it's very relaxing and like I said it blocks out any unwanted noise too <coughs> The one that I have has a nightlight on it as well. You can just get a separate nightlight too if you wanted. This one is a two in one. I believe we've got one of those um, those eggs with the temperature on it. It's a nice glow in the background. I also recommend a dimmer switch for your baby's bedroom. If you need to find something in their bedroom, the last thing you wanna do is have this light blasting out. It will really shock your baby, probably make it cry, disturb your baby. It's, also, it's just not very nice, is it? So having a low light, then you can gradually turn it up when you want to. We had these installed in our new house and I just will never look back. Something that can cost a lot of money is wet wipes. I actually personally use the brand water wipes. All wet wipes are really good. But what I like about water wipes is that there's more moisture in them. But because they are quite expensive, I actually buy them from Amazon on a subscription. I'm thinking that it actually works out cheaper than some of the other brands out there because I buy them in, on a subscription in bulk. Now you don't have to do it like every month. You can do your subscription whenever you wish. You could have it delivered to your door every two weeks, every four weeks, every month, every six weeks. It's up to you, you choose. We do it every four weeks, I believe. It is brilliant. I don't have to worry about carting this big heavy box around from the supermarket. It's delivered straight to our door. It's free delivery. It works out really good value. And that is on a subscription as well. I have been doing that now for over three years and I highly recommend it. I will put the link to that in my description box for you. Something that I found 
was of huge value for my mental health was clearing away clutter. Looking around your house and seeing clutter might get on top of you sometimes. Now, if you haven't done these jobs by the time your baby gets home, and I hate to say it, it probably will annoy you. If it's a job that you want done, I'll try and get it done before your baby comes along. Even if it's just small things like little piles of this, piles of that, and just even if it's to do with the baby as well, try and get what you can done. Remember to delegate. If you're not the only person in the house, try and pass on jobs to other people. Get them all to join in. I've been here so many times and I cannot stress the value of having a clear space and an idea of where you're going to put things. It's really hard when your baby's here and your baby's crying and you're tired and you just think, I don't know where to put this. Where do I put that? I can't find anything. Get things tidied away. Find spaces for where you're going to put all of your baby's equipment and even a basket full of toys that is really handy and hey talking about baskets make a care basket for yourself inside a care basket is all kind of things that you need to make yourself feel happier and things you might need like if you're breastfeeding special cream water snacks i've actually done a video on what i put in my care basket i'm pretty sure it's what I put in my nappy caddy and what I put in my care basket are in the same video. I will link that here, which I will also put in my description box if you don't want to click off of this video just yet. If you've got a favorite kitchen roll, I know that sounds a bit silly, get lots of it because kitchen roll and antibacterial spray are your friends. You will find that you use them an awful lot. So buy in bulk because you'll go through it pretty quick. I use it to wipe down the changing mat wipe down baby's high chair. Also antibacterial wipes are great for things like dummies, toys, so kitchen roll, antibac spray and antibacterial wipes. Make some room in your fridge. You're gonna need room for your baby milk if you are going to be bottle feeding. Make sure there's a part of your fridge which is just for baby milk. Now they do say to not store baby milk in the door because the temperature is actually lower than the rest of the fridge. Have an area where you're gonna put cooked meals if people want to bring you meals over that they've made for you. I mean, that is such a nice thing to do for somebody. Believe you me, having a cooked meal or having somebody bring you something over is a really kind thing to do and we appreciate it so, so much. Just in case you've got some really lovely people in your life that want to bring you cooked meals, and also it's a good idea if you are cooking to double up when you cook so then you've got that meal for the next day as well. If you are planning on breastfeeding, sometimes things don't go the way that we plan. So it's a really good idea to be prepared with some bottles and pre-made formula or even just a tub of formula. Tub of formula, if you're not planning on using it, it can get expensive. That could be a game changer or a lifesaver for you if your baby is not taking to breastfeeding. You never know what it's going to be like. It might be the middle of the night and your baby just is not playing ball at all and you're struggling and you just want to break. Maybe your partner could take over or somebody else could take over or even if you just fed your baby like that, it gives you a break. I also recommend if you do go down this road of having a bottle on standby is having some sterilizer bags if you're not going to be using a great big sterilizer to sterilize all your bottles. These are really good for traveling around as well. Put them in the microwave, they're usually done within three minutes. They'll sterilize your bottles for you and your dummies and stuff. And you can also put them in your changing bag and take them anywhere. Anywhere that has a microwave, you can use it. Obviously, you're gonna to need to sterilize your bottle first before you use it. Sorry, I'm preaching to the choir. Everyone knows that, but I just wanted to say, if you weren't gonna be using bottles anyway, you're gonna to need to have something to sterilize that bottle in. It's a good idea to put some pads ready in the toilet for you. So when you go to the loo, you can just go, oh look, there's some pads that I need and they're already there because I've already put them there. So there you go, pads in loose. Don't wait until you bring your baby home. Have everything ready in your baby changing bag so when you even pick up your baby from hospital and you are driving home with your baby, you will have your baby bag there just in case you need it, in case it does a little poo on the way home. In fact, babies never do a little poo, do they? There are probably a million different things out there that you could do to make your life so much easier. I have two more home hacks. One of them is I use a baby bath seat just in general around the house. I don't actually use this bath seat in the bath. I bought it with the intention of using it as a bath seat, but I don't use it as a bath seat. I actually use a baby bath in the bath. The baby bath seat is perfect to just place your baby in if you're doing stuff, but it just sits in the little bath seat, safe and snug when you're trying to do something. I mean, if you're just trying to put your makeup on, say you just whip that out quick, never leave your baby unattended because there are no straps on it. And the last thing is, Put a sign on your door saying something along the lines of you have a new baby so 
you might say please don't bang too hard I don't want the baby to wake up that might be what you want to tell people or you might want to say I've got a new baby it takes me a while to get to the door please be patient things like that so hopefully people will understand that you can't just run to the door especially if it's the Amazon guy with with all the items that you've just ordered from, from what I've just been telling you about. But as long as people are aware that you have to have a little bit extra time or you rather they didn't thump the door down. Anyway, I hope this video really helped. If you're watching this and go, oh, Rebecca, I've got a million other things that you should be saying, stick them in the comment section, then everyone else can read your ideas as well. We can all help each other out. But yeah, everything is linked in the description box, the videos and the products. I hope you find it useful. Congratulations, by the way. Take care, have a lovely week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.